Hello and welcome back to Sorted Food. Today we are discussing a whole bunch more food trends. And as with all trends, some may be brand new to parts of the world, while others may be as old as ever. And we'll ask ourselves why they exist and whether they are here to stay or whether they're just going to fade away. Oh, oh stuff's already. May have picked too soon, mate, there. Ample uh, rhymes throughout. We're each going to take it in turns to sit in the hot seat, and Baz, you're up first. Bring it on. Lift the cloche. Oh, okay. This is my pick of a trend for you. Straight away, I can tell it's got it's got some legs, which would like insinuate it's boozy. Sorry, wait a minute. It's from Ebers, so it's going to be boozy. Have a sip. Mmm. Okay. What is that? It's one of my favourites. I've had this before. This is slow gin. This is from Slow Motion. So, for Slow Motion mm. Distillery, is an artisan business creating great tasting spirits and liqueurs. And I love the story behind it, and I'm going to use it as an excuse to talk about hedgerows. Like bushes. Bushes. Like bushes. Right. Like trimming your bush. Trimming your bush. And basically, since the war, we've all been trimming our bushes in the UK too much, and we've lost half of the UK's hedgerows because of towns expanding, motorways being built, farming machinery getting bigger, having to take hedgerows down to be more efficient, to create more produce. And by losing half the hedgerows, we've also lost an awful lot of wildlife from within them. The beauty behind this particular product and the slow motion distillery is they started doing responsible, sustainable farming long before it was cool. Like 20 years ago, as farmers, they started to grow back the hedgerows and let them grow out. And as a result, they accidentally ended up with a hell of a lot of slows and dams and, and all sorts of wild botanicals and flowers in the hedgerows. And they thought, what on earth can we do with this? And that's where they started the distillery. Interesting. Doesn't taste like gin. I'm not a massive gin, gin fan, um, but slow gin has a completely different flavour profile and one I actually really enjoy. Much more fruity, obviously from the slows, but also added sugar, and it's not as high ABV, so it's not like your 40% spirit of gin. 26? 26. So technically you take base gin and then you macerate sugar and, and berries in it, and, and typically you pick the slows after the first frost, et cetera, et cetera, and slowly you get a wonderful, wonderful product. Now, because this is just a drink, the food team were upset they couldn't prepare anything. So they've created you a little dish to go on the side. So what we have prepared for you is a black pudding sausage roll with hedgerow chutney. Dig in and, and, and pair it with your slow gin. <laughs> the very first time I had this slow gin was long before I actually knew anything about the story behind the business or the sustainability. I just found these little wonderful miniatures mm -hmm. and basically we bought them and stuck them in our pockets for a long walk, some friends and I, because you're out walking and you just have a little, like having a little hip just, flask with just, you. Mm. And it's absolutely delicious, just swigged straight from there because of the, the fruitiness. But you can also turn it into a lovely longer drink with something like a ginger ale or ginger beer over ice. Wonderful. When people talk about food and drink pairings, I'm always like, yeah, sure, you're, you're clutching at straws. But when you get it right, this makes this tastier, and that makes that tastier. It's jo it, they generally, they sing together. Last thing is they don't just do the fruity ones, they also just do a very clear Lovely. hedgerow gin. And if you look on the back, it'll tell you all the botanicals they pick from the hedgerow that go into their gin. I like that, that's cool. How much do you reckon? Oh, for this a little one. gift box of four fruity ones. So a bramble whiskey, a slow ruby, a damson gin, and the one you've got there, the slow gin. 12, 12 pounds. 18.95. Yeah, that feels, that feels good value. And they're delicious. Okay, Baz, question for you. Ooh, ooh, he started strong in the intro, remember? Is this something that's gonna continue to hedge grow and grow, or will it be slow to take off? It's been slow to take off, but I think it's going to hedge, grow and grow. And it's here to stay, because it's delicious. Try my sausage, it's good. Yeah, I don't have to be asked twice. Ebba's in the hot seat. Lift the clash. Oh, it's the boozy episode. It's the episode, that's why. The episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this reputation I'm getting for myself. Well, stop drinking then. <laughs> Tastes lovely. Not as fizzy as I thought it was going to be based on the bubbles, Ooh. but nice, tasty, kind of hoppy, bitter, got bittery. It smells more APA okay. or IPA. Are you getting any mushroom? What? That's a strange question to ask. No mushroom. Ebers, this is Functon, adaptogenic 
alcohol-free beer made from mushrooms. Interesting. Functon is the first adaptogenic alcohol-free beer range. Premium craft beer traditionally brewed with functional mushrooms. Your beer doesn't taste like mushrooms, but they can help keep your mind and body in good form. So the trend that we're talking about here is adaptogenic or functional mushrooms. Sorry, what is adaptogenic? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so functional or adaptogenic mushrooms uh, have been used medicinally for centuries. They're claimed to have physical and psychological restorative properties whilst also supporting the immune system. Supposedly, they adapt to what is causing you issues and work to fix them within your body. Oh, so they're very just smart mushrooms. Smart mushrooms. Smart mushrooms. Yeah. Interesting what trend we're looking at here. I feel like there's two trends crossing over. You've got functional mushrooms and you've got no or low alcohol beers. And I feel like both of those, well, actually, and craft ale. Yeah. Like craft ale yeah, yeah. is episode three. This is like a trio of stuff merging with one glass in the middle. And it's very tasty. So that's the bottle. I've given you the IPA, uh, which is brewed with lion's mane mushrooms. Uh, there's also a citra beer brewed with reishi mushrooms and a lager brewed with chaga mushrooms. Can we try some? Cheers. 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 Uh, so Functon uh, was launched during lockdown by mindful drinking consultant Zoe Henderson. Uh, she discovered medicinal Ooh. mushrooms on a trip to California, brought them back and thought, I could do something with this. So what better bar snack to enjoy your mushroom beer with than a toasted chorizo sandwich? Epic. And some flowers, and I don't know where they came from, but you know. Bottom of the allotment, left side. I got an allotment. Straight off, interesting that most definitely a vegan beer, most definitely not a vegan sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the trend is more to kind of like, it doesn't have to be just a niche of low alcohol and or vegan and or gluten free. It's just a really tasty beer that happens to be no low alcohol. I love my mushrooms, I love them on toast, I love them throughout my diet, but I never thought about having them in, in a beer. Mm. And if this is better for me than a normal beer, it's probably a beer I should be drinking more of. If you were to see Funton beer in a bar, would you order it? Because of habit and routine, I don't think I would. I walk into a bar and I go, do you know what I fancy? An ice cold cider on a hot day, or I want an IPA, and you just go to what is already familiar and comfortable. I'd want to try it, but maybe mm. it's a lunchtime beer. I'd have this for a pub lunch on a work day when you're not. Why is it in a pub on a work day? I oh dare. Come on. Once again, <laughs> just playing to the stereotype. If I go into a pub or a bar and I'm not drinking, mm -hmm. I've gone from ordering, you know, a lemonade or something like that to, oh, a kombucha. I'll have that because that's more interesting. Yeah. I feel for me that this falls into that yeah. category of, I want a more interesting soft drink. Yeah. Yeah. So how much do you think we paid for a bottle of Funkton mushroom beer? Well, I wouldn't question paying 4 55 pound in a bar, but obviously there's a mark up there. So I reckon if you're buying it direct, 2 50 a bottle, maybe three quid. Three pound 20 if bought individually, or if you buy a case, works out at three pounds each. There's only one question left to ask, but oh, I know everyone why? probably sitting there thinking it as well. Um, are you up for functional fungi, or will you let this one slide you by? The more functional fungi I can get, the better. <laughs> Mr. Taylor, you are a lucky sausage. I think you're gonna like this one too. I am a lucky sausage. Oh, this recipe looks familiar. This is from Millpacks, an awesome midweek meal. It's pork meatballs with a creamy fennel sauce. Ooh, fantastic, but not with pasta. Well, it's the pasta that we're kind of focusing on. Dig in and let's have a chat. Oh, that's not normal pasta. In my house, we've tried lots of alternative pastas and the one thing that lets it down every time is, they, is their structural integrity. They fall apart really quickly. It's just good though, it is good. So 100% it is not made from wheat, so it is not gonna behave the same way as wheat pasta. So what we're talking about here is green pea flour and or pasta. So yes, it is a gluten-free alternative. This particular one you're eating is from Sainsbury's. It is their sort of run-of-the-mill green pea fusilli. Trend? I'm glad you said that, because I think we fall into the habit of confusing trends 
with something that's brand new, has just popped up and never been seen before. Mm -hmm. That's potentially a fad or an original idea. A trend is something that gains momentum over a long period of time amongst a mass population. And that's why we've chosen the supermarket mid-range option, because now you can get that very affordably. It's not the whole food, planet, organic, sort of farmer's market option. This is now very much mainstream and therefore the trend has taken hold. It's fantastic for midweek cooking. So yeah, it's a trend we're kind of looking at broadly about sort of legume flowers as an alternative. And the reason being, recent Mintel report uh, suggesting that the free from market has grown to 652 million in the UK. So interestingly, if this forms part of like the free from range, is this available in its own free from aisle? or is this now next to the pastas in the normal pasta aisle? It's beginning to make that transition. So before you'd have to go into exactly that very special aisle because you are actively seeking mm. out, yeah. perhaps on you know, medical advice to omit something from your diet, that's where you'd find it. Now, this is much more mainstream. One in four people are choosing to be free from certain ingredients, not just gluten, but dairy or vegan, whatever, but only one in five of those based on actual medical advice. And as a vehicle for flavour, it's, it's fantastic. And I'm guessing a lot higher source of fibre as well. Good for fibre, good for protein. Pea is excellent for protein and lower in carb. And on top of that, it's good for our UK farms because rather than growing just wheat, which we do an awful lot of in this country, we can now put pea and field peas into some of those crop rotations, yeah. their nitrogen fixers, it's kind of good. So if you've got field peas, they essentially roast them to dry them out and they also make some of the uh, nutrients more bioavailable and then they grind them into a flour and that's called peas meal, a bit like cornmeal. Do you want okay. to see some other ones? Yes. A bit like traditional pasta, there's lots of different like varieties and price brackets as well, I guess. How much do you reckon that bag of Sainsbury's Green pea fusilliers, literally one ingredient in it, 100% green pea. A normal pack of pasta, similar to that, 50p. I reckon that's cock on. I reckon it's the same. We have to remember it's not yet produced in the same volume and in the same kind of uh, mass production as the regular pasta, so it is definitely more than that. £1.25 for that bag. Okay. I think it's important that it's, a, it's affordable because it's doing something good. Really like it. Well, you know what? Ask me the question. Does this appeal to you or merely appease you? It's obviously really appealing to me. Excellent. Are you feeling good about yourself? I was. Get ready to feel better. Ooh. Lift the cloche. I know what that is. Barracks used to have a cat. <laughs> Doesn't smell of anything. Nothing at all. You'll oh, you have to get up there, blimey. Very sweet. Oh, yeah. It's really chewy. Yep. Mm. Oh, I know exactly what that is. I'm going to count down from Hive, and if you can't get it, we'll give you a clue. Hive, four, three, two, one. It wasn't even a little bit subtle. He was too busy trying to work out what it was. Ebers is dropping. I've got it. <laughs> He's got it. He's there. Honey. No. <laughs> what? It's it is honey. Partly honey. This is wild bee bread. I have never heard of this before. This is like bee sandwiches. This is 100% natural. This is made by the bees. So what the bees do is they deposit some of the pollen they've been collecting, put it into their little hexagons, and then top it up with some honey, leave it for three months to ferment, and they can come back and feast on it for themselves and for their larvae. It's a, it's a bees ferment. Natural enzymic action. The honey basically breaks down the pollen and releases so much more of its nutrients. If you can have, we've had bee pollen before, which is delicious, um, but when we digest it, you can only release 20% of um, its nutritional value. As soon as you let it ferment into honey, you can release up to 80 to 90%. So suddenly this becomes one of the, and I know you hate this, one of the superest of superfoods. So the reason uh, this has come up as a trend recently is according to the British Beekeepers Association many Olympic athletes at Tokyo eat bee bread as they believe it strengthens their immune system, increases oxygen intake, boosts performance and helps them recover quicker after training. Strong application, do you want to try it in something? So you don't just, yeah sure, yeah. 
I mean, it's pretty simple. Excellent on and in porridge. Like many fermented foods, it's a live living thing. So you actually don't want to cook with it. You just want to add it into things to, to season and flavour. So onto porridge, into smoothies, uh, chia seed bowls, that kind of thing. You don't really want to cook it because you'll cook out all of the, the living goodness. Is it similar to just drizzling a bit of honey on top? But with the texture, like the chewy, the chewy texture. And then, yeah, that higher flowery mm -hmm. taste as well. It's really nice. And this particular product is from bees in Lithuania that are literally miles and miles and miles from any built up area or city so that the flowers that they are pollinating from are completely untouched by pollutants. I'm amazed I've not heard of this before. So again, because these are completely natural and they've been fermented, um, they last pretty much forever. Two years. So, I mean, they say two years, but I'd go with pretty much forever. Yeah. I mean, they literally found honey in Tutankhamun's tomb. Should we talk money? Yeah. Um, how much do you reckon that bag there costs? I've absolutely no idea. Compare it to a jar of premium honey, I think is a fair comparison. £10. £12.99. Okay. They recommend a teaspoon a day is a good kind of thing to give you all of that wonderful stuff that it's got in there. And if you suffer from hay fever, it's supposed to be pretty good for that, because it's basically not... it's full of pollen. Interesting. Is this the bee's knees or is it not for me? Mm. Or, or, or you? <laughs> this is why I don't do the puns. Do you want to have another run at that? Or, or no, I can't stick it. You're that's happy fine. with that's that one. I'm fine, fine. with that. Yeah, no, that's, good, that's, good with it. Right. that's all be you. Is this a trend to There's be no... or a trend not to be? Having never heard of it before I sat down here, and you're telling me about wild bee bread, I would say this sounds like a fad, and this sounds not to be. But I'd love to look into it more and find out more about it and see whether it actually should be something that should be a trend. For me. For me. As always, over to you guys. You've heard what we think about these conversations, topics and trends, but comment down below. What do you think? And if there's anything else you think that is trending that we should cover, comment down below as well. We have an app. It's called Meal Packs and helps you plan and then cook a week's worth of meals using one set of ingredients, saving you money, cutting down on food waste and answering the age-old question, what should we have for dinner? It's free to try for a whole month. The link is in the description box below. I'm going to have a beehive one day. You what can buy queens off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> My auntie had hives and the queen swarmed and she had, to buy, she had to buy a new queen. She had to buy a new queen bee and it came in a little pot. Magic. <laughs> Magic. Good. Oh, God. Shall we? <laughs> I can't. Cool.